Okay, we're rolling. Um, well, good, huge good morning to everyone. Hope you're doing great. Uh, if you are joining us at Business Connect for the first time, huge uh, shout out to you. Welcome. I know uh, every week we get people coming for the first time and we're sort of adding people to the email list every week or someone's reaching out, asking for the details. Uh, shout out to Alana. I just saw her join. She uh, she asked for the details on Instagram. So welcome. Great to have you with us. And uh, yeah, great to see everyone from far and wide. Uh, it's just re I really enjoy going through all the photos and seeing, uh, seeing how everyone's joining. A special shout out to Carla, who is who I embarrassed last week as well. But um, she was listening last week um, right throughout when Clark was speaking. She was like, she was doing like dumbbell, um, what do you call them, like bicep curls and stuff. Camera on, just unashamedly facing it, working out while she was tuning into Business Connect. She's uh, powering away on the treadmill at the moment. So shout out Carla. She's been doing the stewardship course with us on Wednesday nights at night school and uh, is an amazing, amazing uh woman of God and yeah we, I love it I love it people just tune in from everywhere wherever they're at so huge welcome uh this morning we're going to kick off by oh, a few people out for a walk too I see Andreas Sarah Caleb out out and about moving so um really good to see and uh yeah, anyway, we're gonna, gonna get going. I'm just really enjoying seeing everyone's faces. But I wanna say hi to a long-term uh, friend of mine. Uh, and that's a guy that a lot of us might know. If you don't know this guy, you'll definitely know his brother, um, Brendan Brown, but this is Craig Brown. I wanna say, have a bit of a chat to this morning. Uh, Craig and I go way back. We used to serve in, in youth, young adults ministry together and still are very much part of each other's world. It's great to see you, mate. Hey, Dan. Hey, everyone else. How are you going? Yeah, going really well. Going really well. Now, uh, Craig, for anyone on here that might not know you, do you just want to tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do and everything? Yeah, like sure. That? Thanks, Dan. Um, so I've been, I've been part of Hillsong Church um, for about 18 years. I uh, came in early 2003 and been here ever since. Um, yeah, as Dan said, we served in Powerhouse together. Uh, we, we did some tribe, tribe leading together and uh, that's where I, went, I met my wife, Sarah. Um, and now we've been married for about 14 years, have three kids. Um, and yeah, God has blessed us immensely um, over that time. So um, yeah, for me, for what I do uh, day to day during my work, um, I work for a stockbroker. Um, I am an equity analyst. So I look predominantly at the mining and resource sector. Um, and over that time, I sort of I've been with this company for about four years. So, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much what I what I do. I love it, mate. You know, the first time I met your wife, I was staying at a backpackers hostel at Mount Moganui uh, in New Zealand in 2005, and I saw Sarah and we knew each other from like our house. We just like seen each other around, and we walked past each other and like looked at each other, and I was like, hey, and that's where we met. So anyway, um. But, uh, mate, uh, yeah, so you guys, incredible family, part of our Hills campus. Uh, I wonder, is there, anything, could you, is there anything you could share, maybe things that God's been doing in your life, your work over the last 12 months or so? Yeah, sure. So um, I guess, yeah, for, for the company that I work for, uh, we actually we come alongside um, managing directors and CEOs and we try and help implement their strategy. Um, oftentimes that leads to us um, raising capital on the stock market for those companies. And just to give you a few bit of stats, uh, over the last four years that I've been working with this company, uh, we've raised about $2.5 billion in equity for uh, mining, mining and resource projects predominantly. Um, and, and, and obviously we've got a pretty large team. We've got about 40 people working for us. But, um, you know, I think God's been awesome in giving me a lot of favour in my business and, and what I do. And it's always been just me trusting him and putting him first and everything that I do. So out of all those deals, we've done about 60 transactions and about a third of them have has been from companies that I've been involved with. So, um, yeah, it's just been a real blessing. Um, you know, I'm running in my lane. Um, I've been part of Kingdom Builders since about 2006. And so, yeah, I just know what my mantle is, um, putting God first and, you know, everything else is just getting added to my life. So, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, so cool, man. Uh, absolutely love it. And, uh, 
Yeah, exciting. And what a look, I didn't prep you for this question, but what, what's something, I guess, just in your world in gen, general, you really just believe in God for? What have you got faith for in the days ahead? Oh, I've got, I got faith that our church is going to grow. We're going to have uh, even greater blessing than what we, what we have now. Um, you know, in terms of my family and what we're doing, um, you know, we've been pretty blessed. So, yeah, just to be a blessing to others and just be a good, strong support family for other, you know, younger families in church uh, that we can do life alongside and, and, and push them along the journey. So cool, man. Definitely, definitely. And you guys are, yeah, as I said before, just such a great part of our church and love being, love being part of your world and you, Sarah, and the kids. And uh, Thanks, mate. You. Thank, I think I messaged you last week. Said last time we last time we really caught up as a family was at Christmas time. You had us all over, uh, including I think Andrew's Andrew's uh, daughter and son-in-law were there. And they, I don't yep. have and Sage as well. And there was a whole group of us. And yeah, it was uh, it was unreal. So hopefully we can do that again this Christmas. Uh, Absolutely, like things might permit. But um, I appreciate you, mate. Lots of love to you. No worries. Thanks. And uh, look, just wanted to mention today, September 9th, is Are You OK Day? And, you know, uh, we, we often say it uh, very much here to just be uh, a point of connection and support for our, not just our business community, but anyone that's, that's in the workplace, which is the majority of us. So if there's anything, look, if you sometimes work, business, um, when you're sort of out there on the, on the front line, it can be a lonely place and, and times can be tough, especially when we're not getting the maybe the level of social input that we're used to and we're not getting, you know, in community. There's something about being in community, being, being in the house of God, even that just keeps our soul healthy. And I just wanted to just throw it out to this group and just genuinely ask each and every one of you if you are okay. And, and if, even if you're not sure, please reach out. Uh, I, I always am making myself very available. I know Andrew and a whole heap of other guys are always committed to making time to meet with people, to pray with people. And can I just say early days when when you know things just started going crazy with COVID and there were a lot of unknowns. There were a couple of people that um, we particularly just came alongside, people that had sometimes just started brand new businesses and so you know made a huge faith step to start a business and then everything just got shut down. And you know, these people have families and mortgages, and we we're able to come alongside people. And sometimes I think, well, what can I do? You know, you I can't I can't float your business. I'd love to be in a position to do that, but I can't, but we can actually encourage and pray and uh, seeing some of these people come through those seasons and come through into strength. And even though we're in, you know, a lot of unknowns ahead, but uh, just, just want to throw it out there. Don't wait till it's last resort. Don't wait till it's an SOS call necessarily. If you just need someone to come alongside you, we have a team of people uh, to do that. So just get in touch. Um, I always, I'll put, look, heck, I'll put my, um, Every time I say heck, I think, what the heck, Dr. Beck? It's a session we do for our staff. Sorry. Um, but I'll put my number in the chat. That's right. Yep. If you, if you need me, just shoot me a message. Give me a call or email us. Uh, we want to stay very, very available to you guys. So, um, yeah, so please don't be a stranger. Be proactive. It'll be awesome. But um, I'm excited for who's going to share this morning. Uh, in early 2020, I was chatting to Stephen Crouch and he asked if I could get a bit more involved in, in what he had built for years in regards to the business community of our church. And, but, you know, we sat down, we were having a coffee and obviously Stephen, most of us know Stephen, he shared here before, he'll share here again, uh, hopefully soon. But, um, you know, we're talking about people that were great to input and, you know, different, obviously many of the different people we've heard over the last 68 weeks. Um, this is num Business Connect number 69 today. Um, but we, but you know, we, he was talking about business people, we even talked about some of the pastors that had shared and, you know, people like Donna, Robert Ferguson and others. And he, got, he said to me this, he goes, Dan, you know, my favourite pastor, the person that I got the most out of, and he goes, this might surprise you, but it was Peter Toggs, Peter Toggenovalu. And, and he goes, it was, he goes, I don't know why it just hit home. And I was saying it to another guy, Raj, who's on again, who's on this morning. I said this, I told him this story during the week. And he goes, you know what? I don't remember many business connects, but I remember exactly what's, what, uh, Pete shared when he shared at Stevens. So um, I, I want to encourage you this morning. Pete is Pete is a youth pastor, but and I'm not not uh, trying to water down what a youth pastor does. But he's not just a youth pastor. I um if, you know I have the privilege to call Pete a friend, but uh, I would I would say he's got wisdom beyond well well beyond our years. He sits on our Australian board, um, and him him and laws obviously 
all of us know know who they are. But uh, Pete, interpersonally, there is so much substance to this guy and there's a lot of depth. And I really believe that some of us, maybe some of us that are seasoned in business, uh, this morning is going to be really pivotal for what Pete brings and what he speaks into us. So, uh, Togsy, honoured to have you, mate. Welcome. Wow. Thanks, Dan. What an introduction. Really appreciate that. Uh, Dan and I go way back. I count Dan as one of my good friends, uh, someone that I can absolutely count on. And he's handy to have around as well, which kind of leads me into <laughs> what I'm about to talk about. <laughs> but um, hey, first of all, I just want to say it is, um, it's an honor. I mean, I've been asking Dan, when are you going to have me back? Um, back at Business Connect. I mean, I've been door knocking. I've sent him text. I've, you know, I didn't know that was his number. I, I, I've had an, another number the whole time. So, Dan, thanks, man. Um, but hey, I, I, I counted a, a real honor to speak to you guys. So many. I'm just, I was just take, taking a look across this Zoom, and uh, so many of you, I, I absolutely love and admire and have a, such a respect for. Many of you uh, have led some of your children in youth ministry, have led alongside. Some of you I currently lead alongside in our youth ministry and forever grateful for that. But honestly, I'm honored to, to bring something here. And, you know, from what I understand, this is a business connect. And I just thought it kind of, I guess, bring a, a thought of, you know, a, 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 around a yeah, more of a devotional thought. And I guess I, I had it on my heart just to encourage our business leaders and what you guys do. And, you know, I'm not naive to the fact that, you know, many of us are in, in different seasons right now, uh, be it a mountaintop or be it a valley low, uh, what this pandemic possibly has done, or maybe for some of you, it's been blessing, but maybe for some of you right now, it, it's, it's, it's a real thin line that you walk. And so, I want you to know that your pastors and that your your community, your church continues to pray for, uh, you know, business leaders right across Australia. And we're continually lifting you up because you guys continue to innovate. You continue to make a way and you continue to inspire many of us. And so just know that your church continues to pray for you, um, be it prayer request on the weekend or be it in our own connect groups. We, we, we pray for you. And I love that. This is a great way that we get to kind of touch point and have a little connection point so again thanks Dan but I thought I'd just yeah speak into your lives if, if that's okay and I guess um, you know if there, if there was a title for this this thought it would be just um, to stay with it you know I don't know about you but I, I don't know if you've had times where you just kind of want to bail on the dream God gave you uh, you've probably questioned whether it is something God gave you or not I think sometimes fatigue sets in. Um, I think life has a way of doing that. And if you're a seasoned veteran, uh, you keep turning up long enough to anything, be it a community or a business or a dream, uh, there's challenging times. Um, I think if you, even if you have kids, um, you probably want to walk away. <laughs> I'm joking. I throw that one in there, little youth pastor technique just to keep you guys engaged. But I think all of us have obstacles thrown at us that sometimes causes us to question, man, is, is this worth staying with? Like, is this worth my time? Is this worth my energy? Is this worth uh, my, my attention? Um, you know, it's funny because lockdown um, in Sydney anyway has been really interesting because it's allowed me to kind of, I guess, work on some little projects uh, around the house. Now, I will say this, I am not one bit of a handy man. Hence why it's great to have friends like uh, Dan Purdy Smith, who you know, um, who know how to build, who can give you kind of you know some instructions. I, I'm not your your guy that uh, is a handyman. Like kids don't ask me for any help when it comes to building anything because they just know I'm the dad that moisturizes his hand and doesn't get his hands dirty. Like that's that's just who I am. I'm the guy that shops off IKEA and wants it completely built for me because I get frustrated with. Uh, knowing what you want and what you see, but looking at where you're at right now. That's why building frustrates me because there's a vision, but then there's a big disparity or there's a big uh, gap between what you want to build and what you have and vision you have, but where you're at right now. And perhaps that describes some of our journey right now for many of us is you've got this vision and this dream of where you see your business at, where you see your life at, where you see what God has called you to, but there's a gap between where you are now and the dream God has for you. I can speak for my own life when it comes to our ministry and what we get to do in church. 
leading our youth ministry for over, you know, 11, 12 years now. And I've still got so much vision for this generation. I've still got so much vision for your children. I've still got so much vision for the next generation because I believe they're not just the next generation, they're the now generation of our church to see our church continue to move forward into seeing it, you know, a stronger future ahead. But I, um, th- there's a gap between what I see and where I'm at now. Where I'm at now, if I'm honest with you, is a whole lot of online, Zoom, trying to keep young people engaged, trying to keep your, your, your connect group leaders engaged, trying to keep them online, um, you know, and doing the best with what you can, doing the, making the best of what you have. And so don't get me wrong, there's a little bit of a frustration with what I see, but where I'm at now. And I think it's about making the best of what you have in this season right now and doing the, um, the best. Now, I apologize if you can hear my kids screaming right now because about seven o'clock is an ungodly hour in our house. And so they're probably just waking up going rampant right now. But anyway, um, I wanted to just encourage you from Hebrews, if, I, if, if you will. And it's, um, I love Hebrews because I love the Hebrew writer. He uses, um, I guess, a technique, if you like, or he encourages his readers who are in their present tense, they're in persecution, they're in a whole lot of pain, people are losing their livelihood, their faith is being threatened. But I love the Hebrew writer because he continues to cast their eyes towards the future. He continues to keep their eyes on what's ahead because their present circumstance wasn't that great. Like I said, people were under persecution, people were losing their lives, but the Hebrew writer continues to say, keep looking ahead. I mean, one of the signature verses in Hebrews, Hebrews 12 is, you know, keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You know, he keeps, he's keeping their eyes lifted. And I just want to kind of encourage us when it comes to staying with it, when it comes to staying with the dream God has on your life, when it comes to staying, you know, uh, keep plugging yourself into this community. I really do believe that the Hebrew writer has something to teach us. I'm going to take it from Hebrews 11, but Hebrews 11, if I can just give you a little brief context, it's kind of like, a little hall of faith, if you like. That's what I like to call it, a hall of faith, hall of famous, of people who, in the Old Testament, people who are well-respected and people who stayed with it, people who stayed with the dream, people who stayed with the calling of God, who were continually uh, obedient to the call of God on their life. And I love how the Hebrew writer kind of lists it. I mean, he talks about, obviously, Abel. He talks about Enoch in verse 5. But I kind of want to zone in on verse 7, And I want to look at Noah for today and just make some observations from Noah's life, if that's okay. And maybe you and I can learn something from Noah's life when it comes to staying with it and continually uh, building into our lives and building into what God has entrusted us with. And I love it because the Hebrew writer says this, by faith, uh, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, He condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness uh, that is in keeping with faith. I just want to make a few observations from Noah's life. Um, When it came to Noah, just a little reminder in Genesis 6, the story of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Now, look at this. Uh, It says that um, Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, the earth was corrupt in God's side and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on the earth and their corrupted ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all the people for the earth is filled with violence. And because of them, uh, because of them, I'm surely going to destroy both them and the earth. In verse 14, so make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build. And he gives Noah, obviously, a set of instructions and Uh, meticulous about how he wants this ark built. Now, it's important to note here, we read that sometimes and we kind of skip over a few verses and we think Noah built this, you know, in just a few days. Well, I think if I'm right, now it's great Hayden's here because he can probably verify all this, but it took Noah at least probably a hundred years to build uh, this ark. And I just think what sort of faith did Noah have, not just to take what God had given him, and build it. But what sort of faith did Noah have to stay with it for over a hundred years, close to a century, to stay with this word that God had given him to build something that God said, here's the promise. Here's what I'm going to do. This is the vision. And, you know, tragically, it was not a great vision of God's going to kind of annihilate the earth. But 
this is what I'm going to do. You're chosen. You're the guy I'm going to work through. Um, here's a vision. Um, I, I, I don't know if he gave Noah any details about, hey, it's going to take you 100 years. But imagine Noah, like a decade into it, building the ridicule who would have got. Imagine Noah at 20 years. I mean, by then his family was probably going, okay, you're 20 years into this. Are you serious? Is this really something, you know, 30, 50 years into it? I can tell you by 50 years, if that was me, possibly why not God didn't ask me to build an ark. I would tell you right now, I don't know if I would have stuck with it for that long. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're, we're getting up to 100 years and here we see Noah stay obedient to the, the, the promise that God had put on his life. And I think there's something uh, that you and I can take away from this and make some observations. And let's learn from Noah's life because Noah was faithful enough that he makes the hall of fame in Hebrews 11 to encourage the people who are in persecution, losing their jobs, losing their lives. And the Hebrew writer goes, hey, look at Noah's life and look at what he did and look at the obedience that was on his life. He stayed faithful to the cause. I think there's something you and I can learn from Noah's life. So I'm going to give you a few points real quick. So if you've got a pen or a notepad and Carla, man, you are, you are charging, girl. You are inspirational. Um, I love running and I love that you're on a treadmill right now listening to my voice and to think that this is inspiring you to keep that cadence, to keep that BPM, to keep, I mean, wow, Carla, give it up for Carla, people. It's so great. But if there's something I think we can learn from, from Noah today, I think it's this, you know, real simple. I think building requires you and I to keep turning up. Regardless of this unprecedented season, I was kind of thinking about this. We're living in unprecedented days. If I had a dollar for every time I heard that word said, uh, I think I'd be a, a multi-millionaire. Um, but the truth is we're living in unprecedented days. And I'm kind of like, when were precedented days, right? Like when were these days, like we are living in the most uncertain times. But I think in these uncertain times, in these seasons where, you know, some of us don't know what the future looks like. Some of us don't know what the immediate future looks like. I think for us, and you guys know this because I'm speaking, I'm preaching to the choir here. You guys example, exemplify this in your businesses and how you lead, how you lead your families. And, I, and I'm inspired by many of you is, you know, building requires us to keep turning up regardless of a pandemic, regardless of uncertain times, regardless of no matter what you and I continue to keep turning up. I love what Albert, Albert Einstein says. Um, one of my favorite quotes, he says this, it's not that I'm smart. It's just that I stay with problems a little bit longer. I'll say that again. He says this, it's not that I'm smart. It's just that I stay with problems a little bit longer. I wonder if Einstein was just that character that wasn't, I mean, no doubt he was a genius, but I wonder if it's just that he stayed with problems a little bit longer than when everyone else walked away from that formula or that problem. He kind of stayed with it a little bit longer, longer, looked at it a little bit longer, glanced about it a little, glanced at it a little bit longer, wondered about it a little bit longer, and wondered, how can I work this out? I wonder sometimes if the solution to some of the problems that we face in our lives is just by staying with it a little bit longer. I wonder if this was the secret to Noah's life in that he just kept turning up no matter what the season. Like I said, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years into it, he just kept the hammer in his hand, woke up every morning and stayed, uh, you know, um, faithful to the promise God had on his life. You know, Pastor Brian says, you know, uh, when it comes to, I guess, offense in church life, and not that any of us go looking for it, but if you want to be offended, just stick around long enough because that's church life. That's community. That's what it's like to be a part of a family. And no matter what, be it offense or not, we keep turning up. And I th I'm thankful for leaders in our church that have just kept turning up. Even today, in the face of uh, attacks, in the face of a pandemic, we are a part of a church where we have leaders, a board, an exec, pastors who have decided we're going to keep turning up. And I just want to encourage you here when it comes to leaning into community, when it comes to connection. I mean, the fact that you're here right now at seven o'clock in the morning on a Zoom uh, says something about you and your character is that you're going to keep turning up because you're staying faithful to the promise God has on your life. The second thing I think we can make a, a little observation about Noah's life 
is, you know, sometimes you're going to be building in one hand and you're going to be fighting with the other. In other words, you're going to have a sword in one hand and you're going to build and have a hammer in the other. Been talking to our youth ministry about this and talking to our youth leaders right now. We're in a season where we are building and we are rebuilding, but we're also fighting. We are building a youth ministry, but we're fighting for a generation right now. We're fighting for their attention span. We're fighting for their lives. Uh, mental health in young people right now is, you know, it is continually on the rise and you can only imagine what this pandemic has done. And so in speaking to our, our youth leaders about that and how we are going to continue uh, lead and pastor our young people in this season but you know for us here um, you know I'm reminded of Nehemiah when he was rebuilding the wall how he had men who were building with one hand and had a sword uh, you know in their hip and ready to fight in the other and ready for the enemy so they were building and focused and had their attention on building what God had asked them to build but then they were prepared to stand and fight you know I think we're living in those days right now where, yes, we are building our businesses, we're building our families, we're building our generation, we're building into our church, but we've also got to be prepared to fight. And I will say this, I will say this, you know, where there is faith, you can expect to fight because the enemy does not like what you and I are about when it comes to our faith. Where there is faith, you can expect a fight. Where there is building, you can expect there's going to be a battle. And many of you, you probably experienced that in your own life when it comes to building your businesses and what you guys uh, have done for years, many of you decades, you can expect that as you build, there's going to be a battle. And I just want to encourage you uh, to keep building and to keep fighting and to keep keeping your feet planted, ready for war, because, you know, there is a real enemy out there who would love to attack the plan of God on your life. But guess what? The scripture says it, that no weapon formed against you will prosper. And I think many of us, I've been claiming that over my household and over my life. And I, I, I speak that into every person on this Zoom right now. You know what? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You know, God's work will come to a complete, uh, I guess, be fulfilled in your life. And you got to keep claiming that. You know, I've been waking up every morning and or actually most nights when I pray the kids to sleep, I claim the blood of Jesus over their life. And maybe I'm a little bit old school like that. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I think all of us need to continually paint the, the blood of Jesus over our doorposts again and claim the blood of Jesus over our businesses, over our families, claim the blood of Jesus over our life because it's in the blood of Jesus we find freedom. It's in the blood of Jesus we find hope. It's in the blood of Jesus that strongholds are broken. And even for your children, where some of you may be worried, continue to pray the blood of Jesus over their life. I think I learned that from my mum. I remember used to wake up every morning and um, I'd go to work uh, in, early in the morning when I was kind of more in just kind of coming out of high school. And I'd go to work at, you know, 4 a.m. in the morning. I was a Qantas baggage handler. Don't judge me. I don't know anything about anything, all right? But, uh, but I remember when I used to walk out of the house, our front room kind of used to be near the front door and I'd always hear my mum mumbling over it, you know, mumbling in her prayers. I claim the blood of Jesus over my kids. I claim the blood of Jesus over my kids. You know, maybe that's one of the reasons I'm standing here talking to you today because I had a mom that continued to claim the blood of Jesus. And I just want to say, when it comes to battling, um, there is nothing like the blood of Jesus. When the enemy sees the blood of Jesus, I mean, many of us can remember in Exodus, when it came to the plan, when it came to God's plan of rescuing uh, the, the Israelites from Egypt, one of those uh, part of the plan was God instructed Moses, uh, you know, the spirit of judgment, spirit of death is going to hover over the city. And if the, if it sees the blood of the lamb over that doorpost, if it sees the blood of the lamb over that business, it's going to go pass over it. It's going to go straight over it. And I think that's part of our battle plan is we can't do too much in our strength, but we can do much in his strength and what's been accomplished at the cross. And so I want to speak that into everyone's life here when it comes to battling battle in the blood of Jesus. It's been conquered. We are victorious because of what he completed on the cross. And when you do that, it enables you to keep building what you're building. And I want to speak that into everyone as we keep building in this season, our businesses, as we keep building into our lives, that we're going to see something extraordinary come out of uh, this season. The third thing is um, the last two things I just want to encourage you with when it comes to, I guess, making an observation about Noah's life. You know, I think at the end of the day, I wrote this down here is what we have to remember 
and what we have to continually understand, and I'm the biggest culprit of it all, is we've got to remember God is the master builder. As much as we put our hand to the building, as much as we put our uh, hammer, you know, uh, to, to, to the work of what God has called us to do, we've got to be reminded every day uh, God is the master builder. You know, I've had to remind myself of that in this season where we continue to look at ways to keep our church connected, keep our church engaged. You know, something I have to continually remind myself as a pastor is, you know what? My bad, God, you're the one building this church, but you choose me to partner with you. And he chooses us to partner with him to build the church. But something I've got to continue to remind myself is, God, you are the master builder. He's the one that's building his church. He's the one that said, I will build my church. And guess what? The gates of hell will not prevail against it. But the Bible talks about those who, who build and those uh, who build in their own strength, they labor in vain. But you and I, we must understand it is God who is the ultimate architect. You know what? When it comes to our businesses, when it comes to our families, I think the most freeing thing that we can hear today is we can put all our strength. And yes, it's not to take away from everything that you and I need to do in the natural. No doubt we need to make sure we do everything in the natural, the budgets, the, the preparing, the planning, the scope, the scaling and everything that we need to do. But I think the best thing we can do as believers is to fully entrust it to God and go, you know what, God, you're the one that's building this. You're the one that's causing this to grow. I think Paul, uh, you know, the apostle Paul reminds us of this. Uh, he talks about Apollos and Paul, who, one who watered and, you know, one who planted the seed. But at the end of the day, it is God who brings the growth. And, you know, for my life, that's what I've continued to believe. When it comes to any blessing, it's because of not anything that I've done. It's because of everything that God has done. Because he loves his children. He's faithful to his children. He's faithful to those who call him king of kings. He's faithful to the one who, who calls on him in, 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 in times of need. And, you know, in this pandemic, I'm not one bit worried at all when it comes to how, you know, how, how we'll move forward. Because at the end of the day, it's not based on my strength. It's based on his strength. And I think for all of us, we can claim that over our life, that God is the master builder and he chooses us to, to, uh, to build with him. The last thing before I hand it back to, to Dan, when it comes to building something, I think we can take away from Noah's life and something that has just encouraged me is when it comes to staying with it is I want to encourage everyone to continually build on strong foundations. I think that's, that's something for all of us that we can take away when it comes to our lives to continually build on strong foundations. I've got a little prop here. I found one of my kids' cup kind of just lying around the house. I thought I'd make a little illustration out of this. But, you know, the truth is if this was full of water and someone knocked me, what's going to come out of that cup? It's not a trick question. What's going to come out of that cup is whatever's in that cup, water. Water's going to come out of that cup. You know, many of us, we've taken a knock and it's been really interesting uh, to see what has come out of people. What has always been in people has always come out because what comes out is what's in you. And, you know, um, I think in this season when there's been some shaking, it's what's going to be inside of each and every one of us that's going to come out. If there's a whole nugget, lot of negativity, I can tell you right now, negativity is going to come out. And that's not going to be a surprise. That's been brewing for a long time because what you put in you is what's going to come out. The Bible talks about this in Proverbs. You know, I think in Proverbs 4 verse 23 talks about you know, out of uh, the heart, spring the issues of life. In other words, when you get knocked, when you get shaken, it's what's in you that is going to come out. And that's why I say, uh, when it comes to building strong foundations in your life, uh, allow the word of God, let this, let this be the, 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 the light that illuminates your path. So when we do get knocked, you know what comes out? It's not going to be negativity. It's not going to be uh, 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 bitterness. It's not going to be, you know, uncertainty. And yes, there's time in our human nature where we want to go, oh man, this and that, and this has been botched and this has been terrible. I pray that we we'll continue to be the people that what spills out of us is the word of God. What spills out of us is the promises of God. Because all of us are going to take a hit. All of us are going to take some shaking. But what spills out of us is the word of God. You know what? That we're more than overcomers, that he is faithful to his promise. And yes, I'm being shaken right now, but his word uh, will illuminate our path. He is a God who will provide. He is the God who is Jehovah Jireh provider. He is the God of healing. And maybe you've been given a report right now where, you know, maybe you've gotten a 
report about your health. I pray what would spill out of you is not just our natural reaction response, sometimes devastating, sometimes full of hurt and pain, but it would be God. I've been given this report. My world has been shaken, but what's going to spill out of me is continual praise. I love what the psalmist says. His praise will continually be in my mouth. That sounds like someone who has been shaken, but what spills out of him is the praises and the worship that is in him. And I want to encourage us to build on the strong foundations. You see, if we want to build tall, then we must go deep. If we want to build tall in our lives, then we've got to continually dig deep. I would say when it comes to planting yourself, when it comes to connection, when it comes to being a part of our church, don't just be a part of our church plant yourself in our church you know what that means it means digging your roots deep and again i'm i'm singing to the choir right now because the fact that you're on this connect group is you're saying you know what i want to dig my roots in i want to dig my roots in deep i want to infuse my roots with someone else because i want to be a part of this this is a community that is someone who builds a strong foundation i look at noah's life in verse 22 of genesis 6 it says this noah did everything just as God had commanded him. You know, Noah built on a strong foundation. You know what Noah built on? He built on God's word, obedience. I love that verse. Noah did everything just as God has commanded him. Okay, let's add a hundred years to that. Noah did over the hundred years that he had to stay faithful and stay with it. Noah did everything just as God had commanded him. You know, I would love that to be written over my gravestone, uh, which is hopefully in 150 years time. But I would be okay with that written over my gravestone. Peter Toggs did everything that God had commanded him. You know, I think what, uh, what, what, what a foundation to build your life on. Moses built in obedience on a strong foundation of God's word. And I want to encourage us, whether you're building your family, whether you're building our church, whether you're building your business, whatever you are building in your life, yes, there may be a little bit of frustration now with where you're at now to what you thought God gave you in your life. But I want to just stay and encourage you, put faith in you, stay with it. Just as Noah did, he built year in, year out. And no matter, be it the pestilence of the day, be it the pandemic of the day, be it the uh, you know different seasons coming our way, we will continually be the people who build on the faithfulness of God because he is always faithful to us. And so I want to encourage you with that. And I might pray to that end. And then I'll, I'll throw it back to whoever's uh, taking it from here. But again, it's, it's been an incredible honor to speak to you. And I pray as we learn from Noah's life that you and I can walk away from this, I guess, with a bit of faith and encouragement to go, there's a better day coming. The best days are ahead. And if you are living in those days right now, uh, man, we are celebrating with you. But maybe you're in a season right now where it is tough. Uh, you know what? We're there with you as well. Your church is standing with you. And again, a big thank you to Dan and Andrew and the entire team here who continued to uh, hold this community and you know connect this community. I think it's absolutely admiring. But let me pray for you, okay? Father, I just thank you so much, Lord. Father, for every single person connected right now. Lord, I thank you for what you've called us to build. Lord, it's significant. Lord, we did hear from you. Lord, it's a God dream on each and every one of our lives. And Father, whether there be frustration right now with where we're at right now, uh, between where you called us to be, Father, I pray you'd help us continually keep turning up. Lord, keep turning up. Lord, for our families, for our businesses, Lord, whatever we put our hand to. Lord, I pray, God, that we would continue to put uh, strong foundations. Lord, be that the word of God on our life. Lord, the word of God that we build our life off God, or Lord, whether that be the right partnerships and the right, right relationships around us. Father, I speak into every single person right now, Lord, that we would continue to build. Lord, I pray right now for every family member, Lord, for every friend right now, God, Lord, as we build and as we battle right now, Lord, that you would be our guard, you would be our fortress, you would be our shelter, and God, while we, while we build, God, what you have called us to build, Lord, you will battle for us. Lord, I speak the blood of Jesus over every single person connected right now. Lord, I speak it over their household. Lord, I paint it over their business right now. I paint your protection. Lord, I paint your, uh, your provision. God, I 
paint your guidance over people's lives right now. God, I thank you right now, Lord, that you guard their children. Lord, you guard, Lord, their finances. Lord, that you would guard their minds, their hearts. Lord, where there is anxiety right now, I pray right now, God, that you would begin to comfort people. Lord, may they feel your presence right now in this moment. So, Father, right now, as we build what you have called us to build, may we keep turning up. May we stay with it. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Purdy. Amen. Over you. Sensational, Pete. Cannot thank you enough, mate. That was that was absolutely incredible. Hey, uh, she mentioned early in the chat, but uh, one of the most consistent people in uh, part of, that's been part of this business connect over the last year and a half has been uh, Sophie Raff. So, what was the one thing you uh, your youth pastor shared today? What was your biggest takeaway? First of all, thank you so much, Togs, for bringing your message. I know, like, if it's from, like, youth or, like, whenever you share, like, I always get so much. But I think the one thing that I got out of it, and I wrote it down, um, I think it's just, like, that consistency that comes with, that just comes with it. So, for example, for me, like, youth online, you know, like, it's, um, and just school in general, like, sometimes it's hard to keep on showing up, but it's a consistency in building those foundations that will um, that will just that will grow you as a person, but then also pursuing him and the project or whatever it is. So, for example, I'm setting up a small business at the moment, um, and just continue to as I like is such a timely encouragement to continue pursuing what I feel like I'm just just a something small a step into the business um, industry kind of thing but just continue to pursuing and um, just have one hand that's fighting and one hand that's um, building. So building not only my, what I'm built, what I'm doing at the moment through school and through the small little side hustle, but also keep on fighting because fighting for my faith, fighting. Um, yeah. Just fighting for, for that kind of stuff in my life. So thank you so much for bringing that message. <laughs> so good so good so hey you know something we need to do it's not my idea a couple of people put this on the radar but i want to get this moving is when someone in our church someone in our community starts a business we really come around them and look at how we support i think someone said it like it's sort of like a baby shower but a business shower might have been henry or someone put that on my radar and um you know like we really come around them and just launch them into that and we look at ways we can maybe do that anyway uh hey love you guys we're right on time thanks again pete uh mate we are yeah incredible and we just we love you thanks for everything you laws and the whole team do just to lead us as a church and we got your back love you guys thank you all right be blessed, everyone. Have a great rest of your week. Remember, reach out. There's anything we can do here for you. And I uh, can't wait to see you all in church. Hey, thanks, Togs. That was awesome, man. So good. Just real pastoral stuff. And it was, uh, it was fantastic. Great for people to hear. Bless you, man. Have a great day. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks, Andrew. You too. Hang on.